proposal, he calls for a new tax. It's called a territorial tax, which the experts have looked at, and they acknowledge it will create 800,000 new jobs, all of them overseas, all of them. And what I found, what I found fascinating, the most fascinating thing I found last week was when Governor Romney said that as president, he would take a jobs tour. Well, with this support for outsourcing, it's going to have to be a foreign trip. It will. Look, President Obama knows that creating jobs in America, keeping jobs in America, bringing jobs back to America is what the president's job was all about. That's what presidents do, or at least supposed to do. Folks, Governor Romney believes it's okay to raise taxes on middle classes by $2,000 in order to pay for another, literally another trillion dollar tax cut for the very wealthy. President Obama knows that there's nothing decent or fair about asking people with more to do less and with less to do more. Governor Romney believes, he believes that kids, kids like our dreamers, those immigrant children, those immigrant children who were brought to America's shores through no fault of their own, he thinks they're a drag on the American economy. President Obama believes that even though those dreamers, those kids, didn't choose to come here, they have chosen to do right by America, and it's time for us to do right by them. <laughs> Governor Romney. <laughs> Governor Romney. Governor Romney. Governor Romney looks at the notion of equal pay in terms of a company's bottom line. President Obama, he knows that making sure our daughters get the same pay for the same jobs as our son is every father's bottom line. Look. I kind of expected all that from him, but one thing truly perplexed me at their convention. The thing that perplexed me most was this idea they kept talking about, about the culture of dependency. They seem to think you create a culture of dependency when you provide a bright, young, qualified kid from a working-class family a loan to get to college, or, or when you provide a job training program in a new industry for a dad who lost his job because it was outsourced. Folks, folks. That's not how we look at it. That's not how America's ever looked at it. What he doesn't understand is all these men and women are looking for is a chance, just a chance to acquire the skills to be able to provide for their families so they can once again hold their heads high and lead independent lives with dignity. That's all they're looking for. Look. And it literally amazes me they don't understand that. You know, I told you at the outset, the choice is stark. Two different visions, two different value sets. But at its core, the difference is able to reduce to be a fundamental difference. You see, you, we, most Americans, have incredible faith in the decency and hard work of the American people. And we know what has made this country. It's the American people. As I mentioned at the outset, four years ago, we were hit hard. You saw, you saw your retirement accounts drain, the equity in your homes vanish, jobs lost around the line. But what did you do as Americans? What you've always done. You didn't lose faith. You fought back. You didn't give up. You got up. You're the ones. The American people, you're the ones. You're the reason why we are still better positioned than any country in the world to lead the 21st century. You never quit on America, and you deserve a president who will never quit on you. There's one more thing, one more thing. 
our Republican opponents are just dead wrong about. America is not in decline. America is not in decline. I've got news for Governor Romney and Congressman Ryan. Gentlemen, never, ever, it never makes sense. It's never been a good bet to bet against the American people. Never. My fellow Americans, America is coming back. And we're not going back. And we have no intention of downsizing the American dream. Never. Never a good bet. Ladies and gentlemen, in a moment, in a moment, we're going to hear from a man whose whole life is a testament to the power of that dream and whose presidency is the best hope to secure that dream for our children. For you see, you see, we see a future. We really, honest to God, do. We see a future where everyone, rich and poor, does their part and has a part. A future where we depend more on clean energy from home and less on oil from abroad. A future where we're number one in the world again in college graduation. A future where we promote the private sector, not the privileged sector. And a future, and a future where women once again control their own choices, their destiny, and their own health care. And ladies and gentlemen, Rock and I see a future. It's in our DNA where no one, no one is forced to live in the shadows of intolerance. <laughs> Folks, we see a future where American where America leads not only by the power of our, the example of our power, but by the power of our example, where we bring our troops home from Afghanistan just as we proudly did from Iraq. A future, a future where we fulfill the only truly sacred obligation we have as a nation. The only truly sacred obligation we have is to prepare those who we send to war and care for them when they come home from war. And tonight, and tonight, <clears throat> tonight, I want to acknowledge, <clears throat> I want to acknowledge, uh, as we should every night, the incredible debt we owe to the families of those 6,473 fallen angels, and those 49,746 wounded, thousands critically, thousands who will need our help for the rest of their lives. Folks, <clears throat> we never we must never, ever forget their sacrifice and always keep them in our care and in our prayers. My fellow Americans, we now, we now, and we now find ourselves at the hinge of history. And the direction we turn is not figuratively, is literally in your hands. It has been a, a truly great honor to serve you and to serve with Barack, uh, who has always stood up with you for the past four years. I've seen him tested. I know his strength, his command, his faith. And I also know the incredible confidence he has in all of you. I know this man. 
Yes, the work of recovery is not yet, not yet complete, but we are on our way. The journey of hope is not yet finished, but we are on our way. And the cause of change is not fully accomplished, but we are on our way. So I say to you tonight, with absolute confidence, America's best days are ahead, and yes, we are on our way. And in light, in light of that horizon, for the values that define us, for the ideals that inspire us, there is only one choice. That choice is to move forward, boldly forward, and finish the job and re-elect President Barack Obama. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. God bless you. Thank you.